Hey everybody, never thought I would see myself making this video, but here we are. Looks like I am the recipient of a defective Ryzen CPU, or APU for that matter. So I had ordered on Amazon, yeah on Amazon, um, an AMD Ryzen 7 5700G APU to slap into the Mid Tower Deluxe. And let's just say that everything was going to plan for a moment. I got the BIOS updated on this motherboard to the BIOS or the UEFI firmware, firmware revision needed for supporting this newer APU. Installed it. So I started up, went into the firmware settings, uh, made a couple of changes just. Because, uh, like, for example, this thing uh, has RAID 10, and by default, when you flash the BIOS or install a CPU or whatever, it, the default setting, it goes back to his AHCI. So I had to go in, check a couple of things, make sure virtualization stuff's turned on, check temps, all that. Went to restart it. Look, it was about ready to start into Windows, and all of a sudden, system resets. Didn't look like a Windows crash, it just reset. And then the um, screens didn't come back on. Then the system cut off. And two seconds later, start back up. Like, weird. And then it did it again, several times. And eventually, I just unplugged the system. Uh, I did not like. I did not like power cycling my data hard drives like that. So that's not good for them. Um, <clears throat> So I put the old Ryzen 7 1700X CPU back in. System fires right up. I'm like, okay, maybe there's a bug in this BIOS that I installed. It was 7.1, 7 I think. It's an ASRock X370 Killer SLI um, AC motherboard from late 2017. CPU support list has it supporting this new processor. But here's where it gets real weird. So eventually I'm up to one of the uh, beta releases of the BIOS for this motherboard and still having the same problem. I put the Ryzen 7 5700G processor back in. System does its weird thing. It won't it won't post, it just power cycles all phone, all phone, all phone. This is on video too. You'll get to see it in a moment. It's a good thing I happen to have my Porta Cube system home this week because I'm off from work this week because the college I work at is on fall break. So I open up the Porta Cube system, which has a Ryzen 5 5600G. I pull that APU out, stick it in the Metarlux. Metarlux fires up just fine, not a problem. Goes into Windows, everything looks great. And I should note that the Ryzen 5 5600G is really similar to the Ryzen 7 5700G Cezanne architecture. So I ended up installing the Ryzen 7 5700G APU on a separate motherboard that I have. Um, that was given to me by a viewer a while back. And that motherboard with the BIOS revision I flashed to it should support that processor. No post. Uh, playing dead, basically. However, I think there was something going on with that motherboard more than just the processor. So I ended up putting that APU, <clears throat> that brand new APU, into my Porta Cube system. Porta Cube system doesn't like it either. It refuses to post. And the motherboard that's in it, which is the ASRock B550 HCV motherboard, the BIOS that came on it supported that APU, but it didn't like it. So I'm really thinking this freaking APU is almost DOA. So anyways, here's a look at the video footage of where I was installing this and where I powered the system up for the first time, where everything was seemingly working okay and then until it wasn't. And then a little footage added afterwards. Like, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, 
Okay, you can see now we have our Ryzen 7 5700G with Radeon graphics. Very nice. <clears throat> so, let's go ahead and check our temperatures. Things seem okay here. So, my plan, of course, is we're keeping the Radeon RX 550 graphics card, but I plan to use the Ryzen APU to um, handle tasks like video editing, um, stuff like that. Basically, when I export a video using my video editing software, it uses the Ryzen APU to handle that instead of using the RX 550 because the RX 550 is very slow at exporting videos compared to the um, Ryzen 5 5600G and also probably this as well. So before I do anything else, I need to go ahead and re-enable some things. So we'll go to Advanced. And let's go through our storage. We need to set our SATA back to RAID because we have a RAID 10 set up here. And um, let's see here. Let's just run through some things here and make sure yep, that's turned on. The uh, FTPM is turned on. Onboard devices. Check in here real quick. Everything here is fine. So TPM is of course turned on. So now this machine officially meets the Microsoft Delete class requirements from Windows 11. <clears throat> also make sure that virtualization is enabled by default and it is. Let's go over to OC um, Tweaker. Let's check our DRAM configuration. Let's make sure that our XMP is loaded. Right now, see it's set to auto. Let's make sure that XMP is actually turned on. That way we're getting the best performance out of our RAM. Okay, so I think we are good to go ahead and save our settings and go back into Windows. Well, everybody, things just got really, really weird. I think we have a defective slash almost DOA processor. Be the first time I ever had a processor dead out of box or almost dead out of box, but you saw what happened. The system went into the BIOS, I went through setup and everything, went to start it, and then all of a sudden, this system, well, it reset and then it began boot looping, like cutting off and cutting back on, cutting off and cutting back on. And, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I put the old processor, the 17RX, back in and uh, then everything came back up. I was like, it's kind of weird. So I updated the BIOS again on this thing. I went all the way up to uh, BIOS version let me see here. We're now 10.41. So it's actually a beta buyer. So I went to 10.41. Tried swapping in that processor multiple times. No go. Same thing. System would turn on and automatically turn off. Turn back on. Turn back off. Turn back on. Turn back off. Over and over again. Really bizarre. But here's where things get really bizarre. So, right now, we are currently running the Ryzen 5 5600G chip out of the Porta Cube in this thing. That's that's why we're running right now at the moment. Now, of course, we're not using the Ryzen. Actually. 
Okay, we're, we're still using the um, Radeon RX 550 for the graphics, but we are using the CPU part of the Ryzen 5 5600G APU, and we are up and running now. And I'm, I'm to my understanding, <clears throat> if the motherboard can support the Ryzen 5 5600G, it should be able to support the Ryzen 7 5700G. Okay, so I did some testing. Now, pardon my mess here. This house is a disaster. Really got to clean up. Got too many things going on. All right, so I pulled out this motherboard here, which was given to me by a viewer. This is a Gigabyte X570 Gaming X board. Now, the reason why this motherboard wasn't in the Mid-Tower Lux is because it didn't support the Ryzen 7 1700X processor that I had at the time when I got this. But I'm thinking something's up with this board. Like the CPU VRM is possibly dead. Because I used it to test out that processor. And literally I had this cooler here just for testing purposes only. You can see it still has the pre-applied thermal interface material. Notice how it looks like it's never been used. Mind you, this was actually mounted on here. The CPU never even powered up and actually melted that stuff down. So I actually pulled, of course, the Ryzen 5 5600G APU out of the Porta Cube. First, I stuck it on this motherboard here. Had HDMI cable plugged up to it, so that way we should have video. No post. I updated the BIOS on this board. This BIOS has a feature where you can update the BIOS without a CPU installed. I did use that functionality to flash the BIOS up to the version needed for the Ryzen 7 5700G and nothing. I have installed that new 5700G APU into this system and as you can see um, we're getting nowhere. No beep errors, nothing. You can just hear the fan running wide open. Now this system has the ASRock B550M-HDV motherboard and if we look you can see down there that we have it's hard to see you can see this motherboard has UEFI version P2.10 or P2.1 firmware from the factory so here we're looking at the uh, website for this motherboard and of course not to confuse viewers, we're of course using the Plexi right now to browse the web. If we scroll down here and actually look for our chip, right there it is, 5700G. It only requires version P1.7. And of course this system normally has this chip in it, which is a Ryzen 5 5600G, which is also a Cizan architecture chip. Again, it also requires just P1.7. So, the fact that this CPU is failing to operate on this system, as well as the Mid-Tower Deluxe with the proper firmware, I think it's safe to say that this is a defective chip. And just to preview guys, this is in fact our CPU or APU. Just pulled the cooler off and down there it is. Ryzen 5 5700G. And over here it's a 5600G. So I'm going to go ahead and install that and we'll try to assist them out and see if it works. And of course with the Ryzen 5 5600G APU back in this system, of course it comes right up so yeah I'm thinking thinking we have a bad chip here so yeah my plan here um, was originally to just return this to Amazon try to get a replacement but I think I'm gonna try to do a warranty through AMD because uh, dealing with Amazon's customer service sometimes can be a real pain in the butt so I think I'm gonna try to get warranty on this through AMD what do you guys think? Feel free to leave a comment. Tell me what you think about that. Have you, if you've ever been in a situation, have you ever personally had to do warranty to AMD before, and how did that go for you? So yes, yeah, so as you can see, it looks like we have a faulty Ryzen 7 5700G chip here. So 
yeah, kind of a bummer, but hopefully we can get this all sorted out pretty soon. That way the Mid Tower Lux can have a nice upgrade. So anyways, the rest of it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.